Hey, my friends, thanks for joining us today. We are not inside the camper for part four on our Together Takes video series. And y'all get a good reason or an understanding of why later on. So we've been going through a series again, as we called Together Takes, trying to understand what it takes to be together, you know, to have unity. Wouldn't that be great in our world today? It seems like there's division everywhere, but it doesn't have to be that way. The Bible gives us everything we need as a formula for togetherness. Just a quick review, in week one, we talked about the fact that together truly takes another. Sure, you have a personal relationship with God and that's good and that's great, but God said it isn't good that man be alone. So together takes another, and none of us should live in total isolation, even if it's a comfortable place for us. It isn't a good place for us. Week two, we talked about how togetherness takes openness, just because I'm next to somebody doesn't mean I'm together with them. Week three, last week, we talked about how togetherness takes one heart and one spirit. Just because I'm beside someone and just because someone's open with me doesn't mean I agree with them. Did you hear about or see the presidential debate this week? It's crazy. Togetherness takes more than being beside someone who shares who they are. It takes being on the same page with someone. And Christians have a huge advantage when it comes to that because Christ's spirit, the Holy Spirit, lives inside of us. And he can be more than enough to unite us together. He can even bring us closer to the world that doesn't know him. Jesus loved the world so much that he gave his life. And we can be together in this world, even though we're not like this world, because Jesus in us gives us compassion for the world. All right, so there's the three we've covered so far. The last one today is really important. And this would be an easy one to misunderstand, but its truth is inescapable. Together takes time. Yeah, that's because time really shows the truth of a thing. It's like the seasons. You don't always see, well, the big picture until time passes. Picture this, okay? Great example. Um, two teen lovers, if you will, meet each other on the first day of school. Masked, their eyes meet. Oh, there's an intrigue. There's a, there's a building. There's a chemistry. The two of them keep looking at each other and flirting six feet apart, by the way. Six feet apart. Got to be corona safe. And then, finally, because of the passing of time, it happens. The two of them finally have the opportunity to lower the mask. <laughs> and when they lower the mask, what do they find? Well, they find that he's missing teeth and she's got bad breath. So what did time teach us? Well, <laughs> time taught us the rest of the story. You see where I'm going with this? Intrigue was there in the very beginning when all you could see were the eyes. But as time passes and opportunities come, we see more of a thing and then we realize if it's a good thing or a bad thing, a right thing or a wrong thing, a me thing or a no thank you thing. Togetherness takes time and we should build time into every relationship. There's a great example of this in the scriptures. 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 There's a man named Jacob Jacob learns the hard way when he marries the wrong woman. It's true. This really happened. It's sad. It's tragic. It's in Genesis chapter 29. I'm going to read verses 15 to 28. So after Jacob stayed with Laban, that was a, a man like that he was working for, for about a month, Laban said to him, you shouldn't work for me without pay just because we're relatives. Tell me how much your wages should be. Now, Laban had two daughters. The older daughter was named Leah, and the younger one was Rachel. There was no sparkle in Leah's eyes. Sorry, poor Leah. I'm sure she had a lovely personality. But Rachel had a beautiful figure and a lovely face. Since Jacob was in love with Rachel, he told her father, I'll work for you seven years if you'll give me Rachel your younger daughter as my wife. Agreed, Laban replied. 
I'd rather give her to you than anyone else. Stay here the seven years and work with me. So Jacob worked seven years to pay for Rachel. But his love for her was so strong, poof, it seemed like only a few days. What a romantic. Finally, verse 21, the time came for him to marry her. I fulfilled my agreement, Jacob said to Laban. Now give me my wife so I can sleep with her, so the two of us can consummate our marriage, so two can become one. That's why that's such a powerful action, by the way. So Laban invited everyone in the neighborhood and prepared a wedding feast. But that night, when it was dark, Laban took Leah to Jacob. And Jacob slept with her. And Laban had given Leah a servant, Zilphiah, to be her maid. But when Jacob woke up in the morning, and we didn't have any light bulbs back then, and it was a long night, must have been some party, Jacob woke and realized he had married Leah and not Rachel. What have you done to me, Jacob raged at Laban. I worked seven years for Rachel. Why have you tricked me? Well, it's not our custom to marry off the younger daughter ahead of the firstborn, Laban replied. But wait here until the bridal week is over, and then I'll, I'll give you Rachel, too. What a sad story. Provided you promise to work another seven years for me. So Jacob agreed to work seven more years. A week after Jacob had married Leah, Laban gave him Rachel, too. So Jacob slept with Rachel, too, and he loved her much more. Then Leah, I told you, what a sad story. And then he stayed and he worked for Laban an additional seven years. He married Leah when he thought he was marrying Rachel. How did he realize it? Well, time. The morning after showed him what he'd done. And I think sometimes we rush into all kinds of relationships. Marriages, mm-hmm. Friendships, definitely. You know, it's like we're so desperate for togetherness that we see someone and we throw everything we have at it. When maybe what we need to do is slow down a little bit and let time pass. Hey, I'm not saying we shouldn't be caring and kind to others, but we shouldn't give them our hearts until we can be sure that it's right. When we do, it's bad for everyone. I feel awful for Leah in this story. I feel awful for Rachel in this story. And I feel awful for Jacob. Sometimes life gets messy when we rush. Togetherness takes time. Jesus put it this way, a tree is known by its fruit. Yeah, you know an awful lot about the kind of tree it is when you slow down and you let it show you its fruit. And fruit doesn't just come like it isn't always there, it comes in season. There's an account of this that I wanna to read to you in Mark chapter 11, verses 12 to 14. It's a pretty interesting one. This is one where Jesus, God's son, really shows us his humanity. He'd had a long few days. He'd been working hard, and he and his disciples were walking back home. And as they were walking along, they, well, they saw a fig tree. And the fig tree had leaves. And you need to know a little something about fig trees. If a fig tree has leaves, the fig tree can have figs. They come together at the same time. So the leaf buds, and then there's the fig. All right, so keep it up. Keep that in mind, and let's read together. Mark chapter 11, verse 12. The next morning, as Jesus and his disciples were leaving Bethany, Jesus was hungry. And sometimes we're hungry. We're hungry for food, we're hungry for love, we're hungry for friendship and trust. And he noticed a fig tree in full leaf, just a little way off. So he went over to see if he could find any figs. But there were only leaves, because it was just too early in the season for fruit. Well, that's a bummer, you know. He was hoping to find figs, but there weren't any. Well, the problem is Jesus shows us here his humanity, and it, and it wasn't so easy because he had his hopes set on those figs. He saw the leaves, and he was really hopeful that it would produce. He went after that. He went out of his way to check it out, and this is what happens. Verse 14. When Jesus realized that there were no figs on the tree, 
He said to the tree, may no one ever eat your fruit again, exclamation point. And the disciples heard him say it. Read on and guess what? The next day, Matthew tells us, the tree withered to nothing. Yeah, Jesus was so upset that he cursed the tree. A tree is known by its fruit, and if we'd simply slow down before we go all after it, maybe it wouldn't hurt so bad. Maybe some of the deepest hurts in our lives are because we gave away a part of ourselves that we should have been a little slower to give away. Togetherness takes time. And I know you want that best friend, or that spouse, or that dream love, and all the romance songs make it sound like that person's just around the corner, and all you need to do is just grab them. I think we need to slow down, because togetherness takes time. When Jesus realized there weren't any figs, it was a crushing blow. So much so, he cursed a tree that wasn't even in fig season, because it looked like it would be there, and then it wasn't. It's a sad story, that's for sure. Proverbs chapter 13, verse 12 says this, hope deferred or delayed or, you know, held back. Hope deferred makes the heart sick, but a dream fulfilled is a tree of life. You can't argue with the logic of this. Nothing's going to hurt so deep in this life as realizing the people or person you gave your life to doesn't love you or can't be there for you the way you'd hoped they would be. And this is tragic, and it shouldn't be. And maybe if we come to realize that togetherness takes time, we won't be in such a rush to have it no matter what. Again, I'm not telling you that we need to be guarded or somehow isolated because no, togetherness takes another and we ought to be open and we ought to be of one mind and one spirit, but those things take time. So the deepest relationships in life, slow them down. You're not in a rush. Don't give too much of yourself away before you realize who that person is. And that's gonna take some time because seasons change and fruit comes and fruit goes. And then y'all know, then y'all know, is the fruit good? Is it bad? Is it tasty? Is it trash? What is it? And is it right for you? Prayerfully consider these things. When you're choosing friends, don't just think of how they make you feel now. Think of what that relationship will do long term. Hey, it's good that we care and we should never stop. But we shouldn't give ourselves away to anyone or anything that isn't what God wants for us. Food for thought. Togetherness. Love you.